welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren, and this is 3D prints in the workshop number 21. Now you've probably heard the expression, always check your equipment before you use it, especially if it's safety equipment, and uh, very glad I do. This had obviously taken a bit of a bash at some point, and I went to pick it up to use it, and it did that. We're in lockdown though, so uh, I had to 3D print my own. Fortunately, Tor Selden has made this model. Now, you're supposed to use supports on this one, and I didn't, so I've got a tiny bit of stringing under here, but it has come out well. I've stuck a bit of textured rubberized padding on the underside of it, and uh, it works really well. It's a bit bigger than the original, quite a bit, but uh, that certainly gives it more space or more surface area in which to press down on the wood, so that's a good thing. Uh, depending on your printer you may have to use supports here but he does also make one that is split down the middle so you can make two parts and then glue them together afterwards and you can see its predecessor has its handle skewed off to one side here and so does this one which is ideal because usually you don't just want to press downward on your work you also want to apply some force on the work towards the fence at the same time and so having this angled handle allows you to do that it also makes it easy to grip from off the side of the machine. It's printed up very well. Very happy with the result. It's obviously a very well designed piece. Something well worth checking out and cheaper than buying one in this case. Okay, next on the list is this hole diameter gauge by John Doommaker. Quite simple, it's got metric measurements on the side. Each one is the diameter at that point. Okay, so it's quite simple to use. And to show you, I'll use this circle template guide. We take our gauge and we just drop it in our hole and read off our measurement as to where it stops on these little lines. So something you should be able to see fairly easy if I pick 20 mil, there we go. There's our 20 millimeter mark just there. And as you can see, it's a 20 millimeter hole. So uh, yeah, could be a handy little tool for some. Next up we have these hole center attachments for calipers by Lorenzo 99 and they're quite simply for measuring the distance between two center points, for example the center of two holes you may have drilled. They clip over the edge of your calipers quite nicely like so and the center point here that goes against the edge of the calipers is in line with this point. So you get them in there and you make sure they're on properly, you can then accurately accurately gauge the distance between two points. For example you might be attaching a handle to a drawer and you want to measure the distance between the holes in the back of the handle so as you know how far apart to drill the holes in the drawer. So I actually have used these for fitting drawer handles to a drawer very recently to just to double check the distance between the two centers and they were in fact correct so I'm very happy with these. Something well worth having. Previously I've tried sort of either guessing where the centers were between the two points or you'd go from one edge to the opposite edge but these just make it a bit easier. This strange yellow thing here is actually a framework or a cradle to support this vacuum extractor hose and yet still allow it to slide through and hold where it's needed. Why? Because previously when I was moving the fence on the table it would get sort of notched in these little ridges of this coil in the hose as it went and uh, especially if I was pushing away from the blade it would pull the blade guard and eventually I was worried that it was going to bend the actual uh, riving knife at the back and we don't want that happening. So this just lifts the hose out of the way, makes the whole thing a lot easier and doesn't rub against the blade guard anymore. Now why didn't I just use a piece of string? Sometimes I want to bring the fence way out over here and so then I can reposition this again so it's doing a better job of keeping it off the fence but you can see now it's on quite the angle so normally it sits a lot better if it's just here. If it was just tied around the hose in one point it wouldn't allow me to have this movement. So quite a handy little device. I'd take it down and show you what it would be like before but I've done this fabulous knot that uh, is probably never going to come undone again so <laughs> It gets to stay there.
Now, some of you have probably noticed by now that sometimes I've been wearing an apron, uh, probably for uh, getting close to 12 months now. Um, and it's a Jonathan Katz Moses apron. He's got his own website also on YouTube. I'm sure most of you are already seeing his videos. He's very good. And uh, it's a great apron. It's good having all your pieces handy in your pockets and what have you. And um, compared to some of the others I looked at, I preferred this design. One thing I've had a problem though with though is this little pocket for squares. I find that uh, with this little square here, it tends to stick through and the blade sticks out. I bump it against things, or worse, I can knock my hands against the end of it here. I can kind of fix that a bit by positioning the blade like that in it, but then I do the same thing here, I bump myself, and I can still bump myself there getting things out of the pocket. I tried an engineer's square, which certainly stopped anything from sticking out the top, but I found as I moved, sometimes it would work its way through and fall straight out the bottom. So that was no good either. So I've built a blade guard, and it looks a little bit like a square itself, prints that way up on the printer bed but uh, yeah you uh, stick your square in there there's a square in there in it goes if you do bump it it's now protected by the hard plastic and um, it's all rounded doesn't hurt if you bump it with your hands so it protects the square stops it falling through and uh, stops it being sharp and there we go, as you can see, works with both of them, keeps the blade nicely covered, nothing sharp, nothing sticking out. Now, if you don't have an apron, this might still be of some use to you because you might just want to just protect your square while it's in the toolbox or wherever else you might store it. So again, a handy thing to have. So that's the square guard. I've had a number of different systems for applying wood glue over the years. Uh, for the most part, I've bought bottles of glue that come with an applicator. These ones do, and uh, tight bond usually does, and so they're quite handy. But at a crack at this little kit a while back, best thing on there, of course, is the little Russian teapot. <laughs> I just moved that aside though. Um, I found for the most part, these tended to clog too much around the nozzles. The roller, while a good idea, uh, again, wasn't, I, personally, I didn't find it too practical. So for the most part, I haven't used this much. It's been more of a gimmick. And I started using some of the old silicon brushes for smearing the glue around. They worked well. These are actually baking brushes with the brushes trimmed down. Uh, and because they worked well, I thought I'd invest in a decent set of silicon brushes. And so I bought this kit. I think I got it on uh, Amazon, perhaps. And the silicon brushes on one end, little paddles on the other for squishing or even scraping your glue back off. A little tray to put your glue in if you want a dollop of glue there and then dip your brush or maybe dip your biscuit or your dowel in the glue before you tap it in. And this big old applicator, which replaces this really, so you can spread your glue. It's got uh, like a combed section on one side. You can spread your glue around and a squeegee section here for wiping it obviously a lot thinner. And that's been my go-to. So it's time to get rid of this. And um, because I've not liked these bottles too much, I've bitten the bullet and finally bought one of these glue bots. Uh, people seem to love them so I'm going to give that a try and get rid of this. And so in the space where that used to be, I've made this new little glue station here. So nice and simple. My little tray goes in there. My little applicator down the side there. And all my glue brushes there are ready to go. And that's just going to sit up on the shelf up here, along with my glues. And that's it, much neater. And this, going in the bin. I have to find a new spot for my little Russian teapot now. Aha!
Alrighty. The next thing I've got to show you are these quick setup drill depth stops by High Rise Workshop. As you can see here, we've got this little flexible, compressible little sleeve that fits over the drill bit. And then this collar slides over that and in theory locks it into place and gives us our depth stop. Now I've already put one on one drill bit and in full honesty, <laughs> The little collar here has started to delaminate, so I'm not too sure how these are going to go, but we'll give them a go. We've got a second one here, so we can test two. This one's a 2.5 mil drill bit. We're just going to pop him in the hole there. There we go, and pop its collar on. There we go. Oops, needs to be a little bit tighter than that, obviously, otherwise that's not going to stay still. So let's pull that down a bit more. Mm. Yeah, I think that's going to be an issue. That's as tight as I'm going to get that. Maybe my drill bit's too slender. That's a 2.5 mil drill bit. Okay, let's try a three millimeter drill bit in here. Maybe that'll grip a bit better. All right, let's try that. Mm, having a hard time getting the collar on it now. So I couldn't get it tight enough with the two on the 2.5 millimeter drill bit. And on the three, oh yes, oh no. No, on the three I can't because I can't get the collar down. Right, let's just give them a try anyway. Okay, so we're just gonna give these drill bits here a try with these depth stops on them. Uh, this six millimeter drill bit even though the collar has started to break away here, here, right there, it does seem to be locked on quite well. Whereas here on the three millimeter drill bit, I've got the opposite problem. I can't get the collar on enough anymore. Uh, I think perhaps it's designed for an imperial measurement that sits somewhere between 2.5 and three millimeters, and it just doesn't really want to lock on to either. But we'll start with that one first, see how we go. Alrighty. Oh, no, it, <laughs> it, watch, it just pushed straight past. Here we go. So, certainly a fail on that size drill bit. Let's try it here on the six mil. And just to make it easy, we're gonna use the three mil as a pilot. And see if it'll actually help us stop. No, no. Um, I'm sorry, these for me are a fail. I think perhaps in this case, maybe PLA wasn't the ideal plastic of choice. I think it might have been a bit brittle. These just are crumbling. And likewise, these collars are just delaminating. So uh, that might be the reason it's failed. Okay, so I didn't have much luck with these drill bit depth stops. But perhaps if you wanted to print them out, you might want to use a sturdier plastic and then maybe they might be better. Uh, I'm thinking maybe nylon would be good for something like this and be a lot more wear resistant as well. You could try PETG. If you do, let me know how it works for you. As always, thank you for watching. Hopefully something in here will be of use to you and hopefully this video is of some use as well. Have a great day. I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.